What's up team? Welcome back. It's your biggest fan, the real Casadero, and in this session, I'm giving it to you. I'm bringing it to you, the mother of all courses, to end all courses. This is it, team. I'm going to give you the full breakdown of full stack software development, full stack web development, the whole breakdown. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in order to choose the path you want to take, to go out and get the job you want to get or start the business you want to start or do whatever it is you want to do, team. I'm going to give it all to you right here, right now. At, by the end of this video, you will have no excuses as to why you can't go out and become the person you want to become. Do the things you want to do. Live the life you want to live, team. Let's get into it. All right, team, so I'm going to hit the Windows key, and I'm going to go into Terminal. And if you guys want to follow along, you're going to want to hit the Windows key and go over to your store. And you're going to go into Search, and you're going to look for Terminal. And that's going to bring up the Microsoft Terminal. Let me see if I can type that in here. Terminal. And it's going to bring up the Windows Terminal Preview app. You just go and install that, and you'll have the same Terminal application I have right here. And you're also going to want to grab yourself a copy of Visual Studio Code. That's the code editor that I'm going to be using here today. And you won't need Git, but uh, Visual Studio Code, we're going to be using that. And if you really want to get down to business, you can go over to GitHub, PowerShell forward slash PowerShell. All the links to all this stuff are in the notes below. But you can grab yourself a copy of PowerShell, and then you can follow along with what I'm doing here. Now, I'm in terminal using the PowerShell terminal, as you can see right here. And this is just a way to interact with the computer. I typed this command, tools that brought up the web browsers. That's because inside of my PowerShell profile, like if you do a dollar sign profile, you'll see your profile file. And if you do a git content of that, so like if you do a uh, home git dash content, content, it'll show you the contents of that profile. And so you can go in there and you can just add functions that run different commands and you can give those functions whatever, whatever names you want and when your profile loads, you can just run that, you can run that function and, uh, and you'll have that function available to you. So we're gonna clear the screen and that right there team was your very first lesson in backend programming. A backend program is nothing more than a program that runs on a computer somewhere. It could be on the computer that the software is on, or it can be a computer on the other side of the planet. It doesn't matter. It's just the computer that the software is running on. So when we talk about like building web applications or building full stack web applications, what we're talking about is building a user interface that someone can connect to using a browser. So like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna open a browser here. So if I type uh, start, Firefox this will open up Firefox somewhere there it is and uh, and so the browser is just the application in and of itself it is it, you think of the browser as a little bitty computer that sits on top of a big computer the browser is self-contained it can't do anything with the file system it can't do anything with the computer that is sitting on and that's what makes browsers secure because somebody can't send you a file and you run it and then like they install all kinds of crazy stuff on your computer. This was the problem with Flash back in the day is that Flash was a separate app. Well, there's a number of problems with it, but Flash was a separate application. And when you installed Flash, Flash had this programming language called ActionScript. And ActionScript was actually a version of was was JavaScript before it became JavaScript. So people were using Flash to make games and all this stuff because they had this programming language they could use to program these different things. So like you could write a game engine, you could program an event loop, and then you could build a game around that. And from there, people started making movies and all kinds of stuff. Flash was huge. It was humongous. But the problem was is that Flash lived outside of the browser. So Flash was like a, an intermediary between the browser and the computer. And when you program this action script stuff, Flash had access to the file system. So there was these security issues. And, the, and so as time went on, like 
people began to realize, like, number one, there's this security issue. And number two, we have moved far enough along in technology that the, the browser should be able to do what Flash can do without giving all this access to our computer. And so eventually, right, Apple came out with the iPhone and they said we aren't going to use Flash. And they forced basically everybody to start using the HTML5 standard for video. And that's what happened. Everybody switched over and then Flash went away. And now very few websites use Flash, at least to the extent that they used to. Like some websites, like the entire website was all coded in Flash in ActionScript, like the logons, the security system, everything. There was a whole framework built around it called Cold Fusion. And people were clamoring. They were like, I have to learn Cold Fusion. I remember I was like, I want to learn Cold Fusion. It sounds cool. It looks cool. It was like... It was the hot thing, but now nobody knows what cold fusion is. Nobody talks about cold fusion because it's not a thing anymore. And that is another lesson in software development and programming. It's all the same stuff, but it's all different, team. What people were doing in Flash back then is the exact same thing people are doing with React, Vue, and Angular, and all these other front-end frameworks. And all these front-end frameworks, they're doing the exact same thing that the other front-end frameworks are doing. They're just written in a different kind of way to move information around and store information in a different kind of way. And they provide us with different kinds of functions and different kinds of syntax. So now we go, if I want to build a front-end application, instead of thinking, like, which is better, Vue or React or Vue or Angular, like you can go in with the knowledge of, hey, I want something with the easy syntax because I'm going to be working on it with 15 other people. And I want it to have a lot of documentation because I want to be able to read about something when I can't figure something out. And I would like it to have a, a large community, people who are building other pieces of software that I can use in conjunction with this. So maybe like somebody's built the logon system that I can use with this thing. Be and, and I know it works because they're using it already and they're using it in this system over here. And that there is another lesson in front end and back end development. It's thinking about the architecture, thinking about how things are going to go together. People get caught up. They get trapped in this tutorial purgatory, in this hell of of I, I don't even know what to call it. It, it it's, it's, it's hell and it's bliss at the same time because you have people out here. There's some people who just want to learn. They're like, I want to learn front end web development because like I heard that's what I should learn. And they don't even know what it means. They had like front end web development. Right. I, but they, they, they websites. It means websites, maybe what web application. What's the difference between a website and a web application? Like there's all these things. And so we, we, we hear that and then we go, okay, I want to learn this, this thing, but just to learn it for the thing's sake, we aren't thinking about what it is that we're going to do with that thing. Like, it's, it's, it's weird to me, and I never really thought about it before, but it's strange that there's all these tutorials out there and we're all taking these software tutorials so we can learn how to code. But nobody's talking about what they're what they're trying to build. And and when we do talk about it, we're talking about getting a job. So um and, and it's and it's not even like any particular job. It's just like a job. And then you get like and so all all of the the, the stuff we do hear about it bubbles to this place of like working at like a big company that somebody's heard about before. You know, like a like a Reddit or a Facebook or Am like th like these companies that are right here at the top of my screen, right? Like that seems to be what the aim is. Like when you go out to the YouTube and you look at the videos or you're on the blogs and stuff like that, is working at the Fang companies, the Facebook, the Amazon, the the Netflix. You know, working at those big companies. But when you think about it, like like really think about it, these companies at the state that they are now, how big that they are right now. What exactly would they have you working on? You think you're going to be fresh out of school or a self-taught developer and you're going to go show up at Facebook and they're going to be like, hey, we want you to redesign the logo or yo, 
we want you to like redesign the home page like they they that's not the route that they're going to take like they're looking for they're looking for data scientists they're looking for people who understand the server load of a billion users a day they're looking for people who understand algorithms, who understand data on like this just massive scale. That's the people that they're looking for to work there. They are looking for the person who just finished the Udemy boot camp. And, and so like to start at that place, like I'm going to get a job at a Facebook or Amazon or a Google going from zero is... I don't want to say it's not a goal that you should shouldn't have, but you could make your life a whole lot easier if you take some steps along the way. And this is where I failed. Like I went off into the military and I was doing fantastic. And then I got out and I had a little lull. And then I went on to, to be a DevOps engineer working at Microsoft. And that was fantastic. But then like that job went away and it was like oh well what do i do now right in this entire time the whole time i know how to build websites and web applications and i didn't even know i knew how to build them i knew i knew html and i knew i knew css and i knew i knew javascript and i had taken all these tutorials i had 20 some odd tutorials inside of udemy i had taken courses on all kinds of stuff from ruby on rails all the way to view and react. I, I got books on Angular. I got a shelf. I'm looking at books right now. SQL, Java, C Sharp, jQuery, JavaScript, learning JavaScript, building JavaScript programs, PowerShell, Eloquent JavaScript, learning Angular JS, iOS program, tons of books, books on business, finance, marketing, all kind, everything related to the internet, buying, selling, building on the internet. I've been studying this stuff forever, team. It is all the same stuff. If you understand the process that people are taking to get from point A to point Z, you can build the systems in between, and every little system in there is a part of some sort of stack. And then you put those stacks together, and you end up with a full stack developer. And everybody can be a full stack developer, a front end engineer, a back end, and whatever you want to call it. Whatever, if you can see a problem, and you can find a solution, you can be an engineer. And if you, and if the solution is finding other people, then you are a project manager or a consultant. That's it, team. That is it. That is full stack, front to back. Now let's get into. Some 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 meat and potatoes of this, right? Because we're we're out here learning this because we want to do something. Like I make these videos because I got a vision in my head of how I want to live, and it's like, yo, Cass, it's now or never. You got to get up, you got to do this thing, you got to grind hard, you got to push, you got to make as many videos as you possibly can, you got to get as many people as role enrolled in the Code 365 startup lab as, poss as, as you possibly can. You just got to grind it out. But this is your thing, and this is what you got to do, right? You got to do the demos, you got to do the tutorials, you got to do the videos, you got to talk about tech, but most importantly, you got to talk about the stuff that's important to you, team. Like, talk about the fact that you see this shift coming in society that people are missing, like they're pe they're completely missing it. It's it's wild. The opportunity out here for for people who understand code and understand software to get it is insane. But it's hard to get because we haven't seen anything like it before and the people who understand it now and they just they just go in and they they're on it and they start pushing hard on, on whatever their thing is they're going to be the successes in the future and people are going to be asking them how did you do it and they're going to be looking back and they'll be like hey i saw this opening and i just took it and and i just ran with it like that was the thing like we're in we're we're in the dead center of it now team like YouTube, podcasts, so uh, any kind of social media presence, the ability to learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript from a course, and and then take that knowledge and then be able to go out and to build 
a website and then to build an application to go with that website, a calculator, something that taps into a database and pulls up information that people might be looking for. The ability to build a blog, uh, a record of your expertise on a particular subject or topic or, or, or thing or whatever it is, a place where people can go, where you can become the expert in that one thing where people can go and like they know that you're the resource and from there you can monetize that you can turn it into you know a a a class or a product or a service or you can sell other people's stuff you can have other people come to advertise to your audience and this is the this is what's been going on for ages but nobody talks about it like we don't see it in the media we don't see it on TV Everybody's telling us that the world is going to end, right? Climate, the, the climate change crisis. We got, we got races, we got race, we got race relation crisis. We got all these crises, but, but dude, I'm telling you, man, that there's, I don't know. I don't know if there's evil people out there, but it seems like something's up because this is the opportunity and people are missing it. They don't even see it, right? Robots are sneaking up on us and they aren't going to like come and completely replace us. I think they're going to give us a humongous opportunity to be able to do the stuff we really want to do, but we're going to have to make money. And if you figure out how to use technology to make money, why are you using technology to save you time? You got, you got the robot raking the leaves and you got, and you got 50 websites online bringing in money and you're just on chill mode. Like, that's the life. That's the life everybody's aiming for. That's the life politicians are trying to sell you, but they're trying to sell you in a different kind of way, right? They're trying to sell you a free college. Go off to college for four years and get an education. Spend a, and, and we'll give it to you for free. Just go off to college for four years, get an education. Learn from somebody who's tenured. They got this job. They, dude, they never got to worry about money ever again. They just, they're just there, right? They ain't worried about starting no business or nothing. Like, no financial crisis is going to hurt them. The only financial crisis that hurts somebody who's a tenured professor is people not going to school. Like when people stop coming to school, the school stops getting money. They can't afford to pay these people anymore, right? So they need people coming to school. Government makes college free. Schools don't care. They don't care, man, because the, they're just going to charge the government. What I'm talking about is time, your time. You can start right now building stuff. And, and be on your way. So anyway, back to the back to the full stack, right? So the browser is just a, is just a little window. It just all it does is interprets. It reads HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and it interprets it, and it does what it says. And built into built into the browser, what happens is we have an HTML file, and we're gonna and if we if we right click and we go view page source right here, we can see this is a basic HTML file. For this page right here so if we go over here we'll zoom in a little bit up here in the head tag you got your metadata that talks about this page and then down here you have the containers that actually make up the page and then under that you got some JavaScript stuff here and probably in these in these programs that we see down here these JavaScript files there's functions pieces of code that go and grab these HTML elements so we can say these containers and then fills them with information and puts them back on the screen so it we end up with a page like this. Because we know that this stuff isn't stored on our computer. It's out on the internet somewhere. So if we go and we look at this code and we see all these scripts and we don't see anything on this page, right, it, it's telling us, well, it's telling us one of two things, right? You can, We can have one of two applications going on here. And... And one, one type of application would be a, a single page application, a web, a web application where all the code is downloaded one time and then it's executed just like that from, from that point forward. So whenever we open up this page, this JavaScript executes and as long as the computer we're on, we're on has an internet connection, then we're going to pull in this data. We're going to get an image. We're going to get a title and then we're going to get a little paragraph and it's all going to be clickable. And that's how it's going to be. And this, the page is going to be served up like that every single time. Or we could have something like a PHP application, but well, well we could, this could be a PHP application too, because PHP would just serve back HTML. All we would see is HTML, but we would see like some sort of formatted HTML. We would see, um, 
inside it and we would see the text that the same text that we see on this page but we're not seeing that stuff so this tells me that this javascript is feeding this into here and it's built in it's all this is all built into the browser so this is just the mechanism that the browser is using to deliver this data to the screen and i don't know exactly how that mechanism works but that's that's your typical application right you have a view right we've got this view right here and then it to, in order to get this view, there's some data, and that data has to be modeled in a certain kind of way. So all the news articles where the where that that we're getting here, either they have to be modeled the same way, so they have to be marked up like how our HTML is marked up a certain way. They have to be marked up a certain way. So they could be marked, and they could be marked up in any kind of language, right? It's just a it's just a data structure language. So it could be it could be HTML, it could be XML, it could be YAML, which is I think was like a Microsoft XML fa format. There's XOML, X O M L, and these are all markup languages. That's why they end. That's why they end in ML. And a markup language is just the language that we use. That it, we 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 use the markup in order for other programs to be able to read what we've wrote and be able to move data around that that's it so like when we go in here and we look at this page we've got this html document so whatever piece of software we're looking at we have a standard that that software can look for and it can follow that standard in order to render this page in a way that's usable for human beings mainly like that's the number one intent is for this page to be used by a person somewhere at some point now for us on the other side as web developers as people who want to build things and code for fun and profit we have to be thinking about how can a computer read this thing because when a computer reads it is going to be trying to figure out how to show this information to somebody else who's looking for it and that's where search engines come in the Google's the Wikipedia's the Amazon's the Amazon is just a search engine for physical stuff eventually one day at, at some point probably in our lifetime you will be able to print stuff like you'll have a 3d printer in your house and you'll be like I need a new coffee mug and you go you'll go on the website and somebody will sell you a coffee mug designed for 99 cents and you'll hit buy and the coffee mug will print on your printer like that's the app you can build right now like and, and this is how you would build it you would build a website <laughs> you would build a website literally build a website have a bunch of things that 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 can be 3d printed and then you have the printer and you and you build a sales page and you sell the printer and have people order the printer and the printer connects to the internet. You have some software that you wrote in, in JavaScript. So you install Node on there, on the printer. You write some JavaScript software in there. And all this software does is it receives information from the internet. And so you, the printer has a whatever interface you build into it, an API or whatever. And, and you have a server on the internet. And so when the person gets the printer and they plug it in and it boots up, it runs this little application and the application pings the server and it says, hey, I'm printer XYZ, blah, 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 blah. And the server goes, oh, fantastic printer XYZ, nice to see you again. And it puts it in this database. And then when somebody goes to your print store and they pick an item and they hit print in the print store, you have another program that checks to see if the person's paid. If they've paid and is yes, then it goes to the database and it gets the script and it says, hey, send this script to this printer or send this command to the printer to print this thing. The printer receives the command and it says, OK, I'm going to print this. What, where are the instructions? And then the server gets, sends the instructions to the printer. The printer prints it out and then you take it. That's an application. That's, all, that's what Facebook does every day. That's what Pinterest and Instagram and Twitter and your bank website and Tinder and every application ever written ever since be the beginning of applications were ever thought about being applications. That's how they all work. It's just a series of steps that somebody has figured out how to get a computer to do. You don't need a person anymore. We think artificial intelligence is coming to take over now. It's been taking over Artificial intelligence has been taking over since 1970. 
This is not new. It's not. It's nothing new. Before you would, be, if you wanted to deposit money, you would have to go to a bank. Like you'd physically have to see a person. Now you don't. You can take a picture of your check, deposit it. Done. You can drive up to an ATM machine and give it cash. It'll count it and deposit it to your bank account. Done. You don't need people. Some it. But the bank tellers still exist, and I'm not saying all jobs are still going to exist. What I'm saying is, team, this full stack stuff, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the world out there. The world is telling you, right, they're trying to, the world, I, like I said, I don't know if there's evil people in this world. But check it out. If there were, what they would do is they would divide your attention they would have you focus on multiple things so you couldn't see the objective. That's like my eight-year-old. He, like, I don't know where he got it from. These guys are all homeschooled. They've been homeschooled for like the last two years, maybe, something like that. And somehow he got in his mind he wants to play chess. So he asked me, this was like, this was months ago. He's like, hey, man, buy me a chess board, right? So I buy him a chess board. And then we don't play, like, we didn't open the chess board for like months. We opened the chess board like a month ago, not even a month ago, maybe like two or three weeks ago. And we've been playing chess. And this guy, like he's learning to think like three dimensionally. And that's how you have to, that's how you got to, if you want to win in this game, like, like to achieve success, success, like the success where you don't have to worry, like you got to think three dimensionally. You got to think about this in a whole different kind of way. Cause I'm telling you, man, like you'll, you're, you'll, you'll be trapped in this cage. And I was trapped in this cage for a long time. And then I woke up and I was like, dude, like, what are you doing? You're doing the wrong thing. You're doing the wrong things. Just like you, I want to build applications. But the question is why, like, why do I want to build these things? And for, for everybody, it's a different type of thing. There is something in your mind that, that you're thinking about that you're like, I want to build this thing, but you don't think you can do it. So you set off down this road and you're like, I'll get a job and I'll, or I'll learn to code and I'll build this little website here and I'll build this little website. And, and I, hopefully you're thinking along the lines of I'll build a website and I'll build a website and I'll build another website. But a lot of people, they go down that path of like, I'm going to get a job. And then they get split up into user interface design, user experience design, front end developer, back end developer, technical support, dev development operations, desktop support. You get broken up into all these different all these different things and like now you have to choose. And it's just like being in high school again. Like you got to choose your, your class. You got to choose your schedule. And so now your attention is divided. Right. You want to go into the tech industry. Now you're thinking like, OK, I want to sit at a computer for eight hours a day. But you never really think about what that sort of entails. But but you think software is cool. Right. You build this. You build the software. And like now it's this thing and it pays a lot of money. It pays good money. So like you're like, I want to go down that road. And now you're like front end or back end. What's the difference? I don't know. Right. And you're trying to figure that out because you're trying to figure out where to start. Well, I'm going to tell you, team, like where you start is is f first you got to figure out who you are. Like is there's a lot of people out there who 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 start out learning to code and and they 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 realize that the, what they've what they've what they've become good at, like what they've put their time into is not really what they want to do. So like They'll go to a boot camp and they'll learn like Angular or React or whatever, right? And they learn like all these intricate, intricate things or like they'll, you know, they'll go down the DevOps path and they'll learn like all this back end stuff, but they really want to be designers or like they're designers and they really want to do back end stuff. And so like you're kind of like all over the place. So there's a couple routes to go, right? There, there is, I think the most efficient route, right? When it comes to like full stack front end, back end. Like I'm, I'm here at this place and I want to change careers or I want to start a career and I want to get, I want to, I want to get a job as a software developer. The first thing you got to think is what is it do I want to work on? And like, really think about that. Like, what is it that you really want to do? Like, do you want to lay out pages and then think about what that entails? Like you have to understand how pages are laid out. Like you have to understand every detail in that process 
And if you want to do like back end stuff, then you have to understand a whole different set of things. You got to understand how to link to how to link the front end to the back end, how to do it securely. So like you don't have data leakage and and and, and SQL injections and and all kinds of other weird nonsense that goes on in, in web application development. Or you could be somebody who's like they're into the whole thing. They like they want to see a product built from beginning to end. And in and, and understanding those things, like then you know where you're gonna fit into the into the job industry. And so if you're a person and you're like like for you the excitement in doing like a tutorial or going through a book is or or maybe you like you're building your own thing already is building the thing you're like i want to do the design i want to code it out i want to write all the logic i want to do all that stuff then you probably aren't cut out to work at any kind of business because there's there's going to be few businesses that you'll find Right. And then especially like the big businesses, the one that the ones that pay a bunch of money, they aren't going to have they aren't going to hire somebody who does the whole process. Like you aren't going to just build their whole website from from beginning to end. You're going to end up on a team and on that team, you're going to work on some little feature or, or bug fixes or technical support or or something like that. You aren't going to be building like some new thing. And if you do build some new thing, it's like. Maybe you were hired as a contractor to build that thing and you aren't going to be there that long. After it's built, you're going to be gone. Like the, you're going to build it and then they won't need you as a contractor anymore and they'll get another contractor and you'll be, they won't need you. Um, and so like it's the only way you're going to get into a place where you, where you're working on the whole thing is if you, if it is, if you get into a startup, like brand new, like there's no idea, which means there's probably not going to be any money there either. So now you gotta now you gotta devote some time to to this startup, and it's not gonna be 100% yours. Um, or you can go the freelance route where you're just building stuff from the ground up for 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 clients. But now you have to understand that the customers aren't gonna come to you. You have to have a way to get customers. Like you gotta go out and you gotta get them. And so thinking about that up front, it's like, okay, being a full stack developer, maybe that's not where it's at, but that's really what I want to do. Like, I want to get to this point where I work on this thing, but freelancing, that's going to be hard. So what are you going to, you have to come up with a way to make some money. So you got to like, either you got to come up with something that you can develop and build and market and sell, or you got to go out and you got to get a job. And if you're going to go full stack, then you might as well start at the very front end, right? html css learn html css now you got the baseline of coding and anybody who comes along and an additional skill to html and css that they'll need is going to be either further towards the front end which is going to be in the graphic design area or is going to be going towards the back end which is going to be where like you're working to, you're working a lot with javascript so maybe like they're using angular review or something like that or um they're using they have a php application and so that means all of their stuff is on some server like it's a that they have a back-end ran application and so being in that area now you can go and you can learn either of the other if you go right into graphic design you won't understand code and you're pigeonholed just in the places that need someone who does graphic design they aren't going to be asking you to do maybe a little html from from time to time but it's not going to be a major thing Right. And if you and if they hire you on as a graphic designer, they're definitely not going to be like, hey, right. Like when people put stuff in a shopping cart, it doesn't stay there. They aren't going to come to you to fix that. They're going to have somebody else to do that. And if they did hire you to do all this stuff, fantastic, because now you're in a bit you're in a place where you get to learn and do all of this stuff. But you apply for the front end jobs like right away. Right. And then like from there, like if you don't know anything, you're applying to jobs, front end, HTML, junior dev, front end, HTML, CSS, anything with HTML, CSS in it. You just go apply and then you go and you learn HTML and CSS and not just and you don't go and learn like some framework like Angular or React or jQuery or what any one of these other things out there. Right. Because at the end of the day, and this is another lesson 
the 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 software that we see the angulars and the reacts and the views and all this stuff right like react was made by facebook because facebook has this humongous application and they need a bunch of people to maintain it and they need a uniform system of maintainability so they built this library around their standards and practices and angular did the same thing right angular and google that's why these companies that's why these frameworks go hand in hand with companies because the company built the framework to operate their business and they they need people to learn these frameworks so when they come and work there they know how to navigate them and that's why we learn these frameworks and that's why you see all these a lot of these tech companies are like you've and you got you have these rings of of businesses that pop up around other businesses so you get a company like a like a Facebook and then Facebook needs developers to come. And so in the early days at Facebook, I guarantee you all of the ads for people to work at Facebook were like PHP developer, PHP developer, PHP developer, PHP C developer, C C++, C sharp, whatever, right? Objective C, right? When they wanted to make the iOS app. And now like we're at this place where where you have Facebook has built this big business and they've they've made this framework that they use to manage all of this stuff and they call it React and they put it out on the market and then these startups in Silicon Valley they go they're going I want to be the next Facebook or I want to be the next whoever right and they're going we're going to build this app and we want it to be a single page application right and they're they're passing all these buzzwords around I want it to be a single page application and this, that, and the third, right? And somebody's like, hey, we can use Angular. And somebody's like, no, well, we'll use React. And then they go use React and they, they got their startup developers working on it. Then somebody comes and gives them funding. And then they go and they hire more people and they hire more people. And then they turn into a business of their own. And now they have a job application out on Indeed. And this application isn't from the company. Another company has popped up to... to 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 find people to work at this company that has built his his whole business infrastructure around this framework that was designed and developed by Facebook by people that they hired who knew how to program in the core languages of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, PHP, and, and C++. Like when it goes like, if you really wanna get down to the core of the web stack, that's what it is. Every interpreter on every server is built in C++, there's a Python interpreter, the Ruby interpreter, the, the, the PowerShell interpreter, whatever interpreter, any program, programming language, terminal, bash script, whatever it is you're running on a computer that has its own language, that's all that's going on there, team. That's, that's, that's it, right? You're on a computer, and that computer would be the back end of application, like I said before. And typically, it's a server, servers are free, I mean, they're not free, but you've got Apache, which is the most widely used server software, and it only runs on Linux, and so most of your servers are Linux, and now when you go to the back end, you got to learn Linux, and and this is this is how all this stuff is built up, right? So you got a company like, so you got this, so you got a company like Facebook that builds this framework. You got another company out here that builds their business around this framework, and now they have this other company, this staffing agency that's putting out ads so people like me and you can apply to these jobs. And they say we need someone with three to four years of experience in React or Angular or Vue or whatever. And then we see, oh, these people are paying ninety thousand dollars a year, and we don't even see it. Like somebody else sees it out on the internet, and they write an article, and they 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 push this article out, and then it shows up in a news feed somewhere, and we read it, and we're like, oh shit! If we learn Python, we can make one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. And we go out to the internet, and we're like, hey, I want to learn Python. And then some course comes up, or some YouTuber comes up, and they're like, hey, right, learn Django, and you're like, all right. I'm going to learn Django and you go off and you learn Django, but you never learn Python. You have no idea what Django is and why it works and how it does what it does. And you have no idea what Python is. And now, and now, and, and now you're left at the end, at the end of this tutorial or book or whatever, you've learned this language. You know how to like go in and do calculations and do stuff. But like, you don't, you're like, you're still thinking to yourself, like, how do I build something? Like, I don't know how to build anything. Like, why don't, why don't I know how to build stuff? And it's because... 
you didn't have the knowledge that you have now. That is all just the system. The language doesn't matter. The language doesn't matter. Front end doesn't matter. Back end doesn't. It doesn't matter, team. What matters is what you're trying to accomplish. If if you're on, if you have an application that you want to persist from computer to computer, like somebody can use it on one computer and then they can get up and they can go to another computer and they can use it there. If you want an application that's going to interact between two people across that, that are in different locations on the planet, then you're building a web application. It doesn't matter if it runs on an iPhone or it runs on an Android. If that's the case, all you uh, all that is is the user interface. All of the data, everything else is on the Internet. So your application, you build the user interface, and then you have some logic inside of the application which would communicate with the database. And if you're building an iOS app, like from scratch, from the ground up, then you would use whatever programming language Apple wants you to use to build the iOS app. So you got to learn Swift. And if you're doing it for a, 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 a Google phone, a, a Samsung Galaxy, whatever, or whatever, the Google Pixel, then you would have to use Java. And you would have to use their SDK, and you would have to read their documentation, and you would have to understand how it works, and you have to build it all. Now, if you wanted to build for both, you could go to Google. You could say, hey, how do I build an application for Android and iPhone? And, it would be, and Google would say, hey, like you could use you know, this technology or that technology, but you would have to read, and you would have to understand like how this technology translates on this device and how it translates on that device. And that's how it goes, team. The only reason why you would learn a special thing is to work at a special place. Because that place is, they, they, got some, they have a business that does something else, and they're using this software to run that business, and they need people to maintain that software. That is why React or Angular or Vue or whatever, or, or what, like, we, when, when DevOps jobs come up, they'd be like, hey, do you know Jest or Yao Min or Peekaboo? Whatever, like whatever, they, like some, whatever, whatever they use to do that thing that they do at this business, that's what they're hiring you. Like they want somebody to come and they don't want to teach them how to do that thing. So they ask, like, how do you do this thing? And it's a market. So people are competing, right? They, they, if you've built a billion dollar business and you not having a developer there is costing you millions of dollars a year. Like, hey, let's pay somebody $120,000 and get them in here. But they won't come work here because they can all go work down the street. And they can make $120,000 writing HTML and CSS. So we'll pay them $150,000 to come work here. And, 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 and we, but we need, if we're going to pay somebody $150,000, then they really need to know what's going on. So we need somebody who has five years experience in React. And then the HR person is like, okay, cool, right? They go put five years experience in React, and React has only been out three years or some craziness like that. And now we, sh we show up and we're like, oh, five years experience in React, oh my gosh, man. Right? Maybe I maybe I don't want to be maybe I don't want to be a front end developer. That sounds hard. And then you go off to some other thing. But at the basis of it, at the core, it's nothing new going on. It's just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All of React is built in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And if you start at the bottom and you learn the basics and you master those, everything else will be easier. And it's not, I'm not gonna say it's infinitely easy. Like I'll make a tutorial, but I don't know all this stuff, man. I'm confused by everything that I touch. I'll have to go and look stuff up and read different things and all. And this is like after been, I've been deployed three times. I've ran humongous telecommunications networks. I've, I've ran software deployments as a DevOps engineer. It's like, dude, like you never know all this stuff. And, and, and so like, to get caught up in the front end or the back end before you know who you are. Like, you have to know the person you are. But that's all All front end and back end is, is, is those things, right? And, it, and every application, right? There's layers of abstraction. There's different layers to everything. So we got the web browser and we got the terminal. They're both applications. They're both made to receive some sort of input, process that input, and produce some sort of output. And so... In reality, they're very different things, but at the end of the day, they do the same thing. We just interact with them differently.
Now, in the olden days, in the olden days, when we say when we said front end developer, we were literally talking about somebody who designed the look like somebody would say, hey, like this button's going to look like this and we're going to have articles and they're going to look like this. And then they would code all of this up in HTML. And that was it, because there was no way for this page to communicate in the, with with these individual things on it to communicate with the internet there was no way to do that so what would happen is is we would send a, a request across the internet so literally we would we would have a server running so let, let's pretend like on the left we have our front end and on the right we have our back end and there's there's ways there's ways we can see this like i just don't i would have to think through how to go and set it up and, and everything but we, when we, when we, when you get into building web applications and you start dealing with, like these these front end, when you start dealing with 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 building applications that actually do some sort of processing of data, and sending stuff across the internet or storing stuff in a database or pulling information from a, a API somewhere, then all this stuff is going to start to make sense. And as you build your applications, you're going to be able to see your server running and you'll be able to watch the load and all. But that's like way down the road, team. That's like stuff that you could build a, a pretty decent life and a pretty decent business writing code for fun and profit and not have to like and, and never scale, scale this thing up to like anything significant enough for you to for you to have to worry about like all the these the huge problems that you see these big companies that have to deal with and that's one of the things too like we get scared we think like oh man like if we go out and we start our own business like we got we're going to get so big that it'll be unmanageable and people will be calling us in front of congress because we've leaked passwords or whatever right but that's 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 a scare tactic team like i don't know like i said i don't know if there's evil people or it's the universe but it's a scare tactic so if we look at this and we think front end back end front end back end front end back end right we're looking at this so we got the front end when we click a button it sends a request out across the internet using uh the hypertext transfer protocol and that's http right and it's built on top of the t the, the 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 tcp ip which is another protocol for just sending packets of information nothing we don't need to know all that stuff http is enough because our web pages they're encoded using using h that using http the protocol for hypertext transfer so anyway we send this across the internet the server receives it it goes hey like when we type in a web address a server somewhere receives a request for whatever information's at that address and the server says oh we're going to send this back and it has a web page either already sitting sitting there which is typically our uh, index.html which we wrote uh oh no we didn't write it here but that's the, that's the index.html it just sends it back to the browser the browser interprets it and boom now when we have a php application which would typically in the olden days be considered like a back end application this document would have to generate the HTML file on the fly. So when it got it, when it got a request, depending on what address that request was sent to. So let's say, for instance, we're looking for, um, you know, all of the users in the system. Then the request would go. We would set it up so the request would go to something like, you know, the name of our business forward slash all users forward slash and then some sort of security key. So we just aren't sending all our users to anybody who asks for them. And then you'd have some sort of authentication method to set up that key between your computer and your website. So when the so when the website sent the request, if it had the key, it would send the key inside of the request. The server would receive it and then it would go, oh, instead of sending back this page, send back this page over here with this information that they're looking for. And then would go into the database. It will pull out. So it would the so your your server would call a script. The script would go into the database and pull all the information out and package it up and send it back. And PHP would take whatever variables and processes were written inside of the document and it, re it would replace it with the information from the database that you wrote the application to get. And then it would send that page back to the server. And so you needed somebody who could program that process, receive a request, 
process the request, go get the necessary information from wherever it may come from, whether it be a database or another web server or the computer down the street or call Debbie down in finance and ask her to press one, two, three on the keypad and then hang up the phone. Like whatever it was, somebody had to program that and then they would say, this is how it has to be formatted and then they would send it back to the front end person. And maybe the front end person would say like, hey, here's the hooks here are the things, this is the information that I need you to fill in. Or maybe the back end person will go to the front end person and say, hey, when you make this design, just reach for these hooks to the API to pull in the information that you need. And that's where the front end and the back end comes from. But then when we got to this place where we could use these single page applications, which are really just JavaScript applications. They're just full programs written in JavaScript. And the request is executed using JavaScript, which led to something called AJAX, a asynchronous JavaScript. And that meant that while your page was loading, you could have scripts that ran and they would go send requests out to the internet and then they would wait for a response. And then when they got the response, they would take that information and they would write it to the DOM wherever you told it. So then the page would update. So now you had this mechanism where you could click a button on the page instead of sending a request to the server and the server building a whole new web page and sending you the entire page, it would just send you the information that you requested and then the 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 front side the front end javascript would process the information and then put it on the screen in the format that you said to put it on the screen in and that and, so, and that is where the front end developer and the back end developer became sort of like one thing but in order to get to that level, right, you can start in one place or the other. You can start at the code or you could start at just the graphic design stuff. And I say, like, if you're just getting started, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, H that's it, right? Learn the structure of the page and use the proper semantic markup because that's going to give you like like that's something you could use right away. So you could go out and you can learn HTML and you can build a website every day. You can just go out and you can just copy other websites. Like we like I, there's a video on the channel where I just copied the Supreme website and you can take it and you can redo it any way you want. You can put it on the Internet. You can you can search engine optimize it so you can put all your your keywords and your descriptions. You can lay out everything the way it's supposed to be. You can go out, you can get a couple advertisements and put it up there. And you can just sit this thing on the Internet and let it sit there. And it can be a part of your portfolio or it can be a part of your blog or it can be a part of whatever. Or it can be a site all by itself. But it's, fill out all the information, what exactly that page is about. So when people are searching for anything similar on the Internet, and the more information you put on the website, the better, because the chances of somebody having like a ridiculously long search term that matches exactly what your website is about is even better. This is where SEO comes in. This is where people talk about writing articles and stuff. They'll find your site. And as more and more people come to your site, you'll build authority in this thing that your site is ranking for. And now you got this thing on the Internet that people come to. And ever so often, they'll click a button and that button will result in some sort of commission or them buying something on Amazon or whatever. And you'll get a little bit of money. And that's that's how all these businesses are ran. Every single business out there, the exact same thing, the same business that we want to go get jobs to work at are doing the same thing. They're, they're, they're selling some sort of product or service on the internet and they're looking for somebody to help them build and maintain the systems that make that those transactions possible. And if you can go and work for somebody else doing that, you can work for yourself doing the exact same thing. You just have to think a different kind of way. You have to and, – and you get out of your mindset of – of job, 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 I got to get a job. It's like, I know you got to get a job, team. But like I said, you can apply for entry-level HTML, CSS jobs and then build, 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 build. And once you get good, like you can say, okay, how do I add this feature? How do I add a, 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 a email sign-up form where they can sign up? And then you go on to the next thing. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. And again, the old world will have us out here learning stuff that one day will be obsolete. 
and we'll be scratching our heads going like, dude, like, why did I learn this thing? And now you're trying to learn something else. And it's hard because you don't understand the fundamentals because you use some sort of framework that somebody else told you you needed to learn to get a certain kind of job. When, when, when what you could have been doing was building stuff in the base languages of all those things, like just starting from the ground up. First, you're figuring out what you want to build, and then you're going out and you're building that thing. So for me, I'm all about web applications. So let's talk about let's talk about things from a web app standpoint. So you've got you've got a bunch of different avenues you could take if you have to build a a, a, a full stack application like that, where you've got this front end and the back end. And, and again, software is the exact same thing, right? User interface. Internet, the website is the user interface, and then you have the logic. The logic is whatever code is used to generate that interface and whatever code is used to do the processes. Before, the code used to do the process was the same code that was used to generate the page, and that was called PHP. And then that changed. The code that was used to do the process became JavaScript, and JavaScript became the code used to generate the page. And then JavaScript became the code used to send the request. And that request still had to be sent back in some sort of format that the browser could understand. And it, it, the, the data couldn't be sent back. In, it could be sent back in HTML format, but then JavaScript would have to, you know, tell the browser, like, hey, here's this HTML. Or you could send it back in, J in JavaScript object notation or XML or whatever other format you want. Parse that format and then give that information to the 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 dom right so you would use your javascript to insert this stuff in the page and then your page would be built but so like i said before like the front end became became merged with the back end and and so now that's where we stand and in order to go out and to get a job right like if you just start at the html side you're going to be competing with a lot of people all the way up the ladder to begin with. So what like self-taught people, people with degrees, people who decided to change careers, doctors and lawyers who are like, I don't want to be a doctor anymore. I don't want to be a lawyer anymore. I'm going to go write some code, whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you got to be, you got to think through this. So if I'm going to do this thing, right? Like if, if I go through a boot camp next to somebody who has a, a degree in astrophysics or whatever a degree in anything right like i have no degree and they have a degree if we go through this boot camp and we send our resumes out right like who's more likely to get the job if 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 i go through this boot camp and this other person goes to this boot camp and they have 10 years of experience as a as an aerospace engineer or 10 years of experience as, as a, a sergeant in the army or, or whatever, right? 10 years of experience of something, like something to put on their resume and you have no experience, they're going to get the job because they got the same education from the boot camp as you. But if they would have went to the boot camp and you would have started learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and just building stuff every day and adding stuff to it, by the, end, by the time they finished the boot camp, you would have a website for every day of the week that you could show an employer. So they would show up and they would say, hey, I went through this boot camp and I got this great resume and I know, and, and again, when they're applying, it's gonna be an entry level job because they don't, the employer doesn't know, right? They just know that they came out of this boot camp. So maybe there's a little more clout there, but I think you could, I think you could probably more than close the gap if you show up and you say, hey, right? Like over the last, two months I built 60 websites and this is how much traffic they're getting on the internet. You know, I built 60, I built, I built 60 websites and they all like, you can log into them and like, you can do stuff. I got this calculator over here. I got this other website where you can store bookmarks. I got this other website where, um, where you can calculate your mortgage. I got this other website where you can. And so you get all this proof where you were like doing stuff. And that's something that most people don't do. Like you do, like you just go out and build the stuff. But first, you got to know what you want to build, and that's what jacks people up. That's why people get caught up on this question: like, should I learn front end, or should I learn back end, or what's front end, or what's back end, or where do I start, or what do I do? Right? You can start wherever you want. I think if if you need money right now, best thing to do is get a job in sales. Go just go get a sales job, and then just work sales, and then. You say you go, I want to get into code, and then you think about what exactly it is you want to do, 
And if if your goal is to, it, you know, it doesn't even matter if your if your goal is because you aren't gonna get a job like right away, right away. But you can't. The fastest way from zero to job is HTML, CSS, and then build a few websites. Build a portfolio website and then build like some websites to put in there. And then you can go out and you can apply for HTML jobs. Or you could go on Upwork and say, hey, like I'll build your website for 200 bucks. Or you could go on Fiverr and say, hey, I'll build your website for 200 bucks. Or you could go wherever, right? Like you could do all of these things. And like that'll get you started. And then from there, you can go on and learn like the more advanced stuff. And you can build things to wrangle these sites together like it's a, a log on for all of them a log on and then and then from there you can say hey like i'm a back-end developer i have experience in authentication or whatever right and so because you've been studying that and you understand it because you've built it and you have proof that it works because somebody can go to one of your websites that you built and they can create an account and they can say i lost my password and they can get a reset and then they can get a two-factor authentication and you can say i built all this stuff here's the source code go hey take a look at it and then they'll go how did you build this and you'll be able to say well i was just thinking through this and then i did it like this and then they'll ask you a question like well what did you do about this issue and you can say you know i didn't even think about that i don't have anything in there like that thanks for saying something i'm gonna fix that Right. And then now and now they but they can't even have that conversation with somebody else because somebody else doesn't even have that thing. They have to give them some crazy contrived algorithm on the board. Go figure out how to do O of N, blah, blah, blah. And then this person has got to figure it out. And we hear about that stuff a lot because that's how it goes down. Right. And then especially for people going to these big companies, because they are looking for somebody at the beginning level. They want a, a data scientist. They want a software engineer, like an engineer engineer, like the person who's going to build the next platform. Right. The person who's going to build the next Angular. Like that's the that's the type of people that they're looking for. They're not looking for the people who who learned Angular. They want the people who are going to build Angular. The other companies that surround them. The smaller companies or even companies of the same size, but just operate in a different business space like the Ubers and the Airbnbs, they'll do, they'll use that framework. And then they, when they start hiring people for two hundred thousand dollars a year, like there's going to be this big rush. Hey, we got to go learn like the new the new Airbnb framework, whatever that is. And, and and nobody will be able to give you like a concrete answer as to what the deal is like hey like why is everybody learning this thing and, and people they'll make up all kinds of stuff they'll be like oh it's so easy oh it's so this oh it's so that or it does this thing or it does that thing no man at the end of the day all it is is this company is paying people a lot of money to learn this thing and other companies are like oh man this must be super dope and their people start using it and then those companies start hiring people and now people are competing because they think something super special about the new airbnb framework so they're competing to hire developers to build this thing and they're able to compete and hire these developers because there's all this money floating around out there in silicon valley and when the money comes into a startup they can use it to hire more people and that's how the story goes, team. And that's why. And, and so you got all these people who go out there, learn all these frameworks. And then the market dries up. Something goes wrong. The economy tanks. And then you got a bunch of people who know React, but they don't know how to build nothing. They can't build their own. They can't. <laughs> they they like not only not only can they not go build a website using React, but they can't go build a website using just basic HTML and CSS. And when they are able to do it. When they are able to build a website using React or HTML and CSS, they don't even know how to search engine optimize it so people can find it because they don't even understand why things are the way they are. They don't understand exactly what the H1 is for and why you can't have five H1s on the same page. They don't understand that like there there is a, a tag specifically for addresses. And if you give the if you if you put addresses inside of the address tag when search engines parse the page they look at this is a business name this is an address oh we can put this in our directory of businesses and when they do that and if you have an image there and if you have like your your what is it called your your little icon that's up in the tab of your window and if you have uh your glyph icon if you've got your glyph icon and you got all your ducks in a row that you'll show up higher in Google Maps, which means that you'll get more business. 
But a lot of developers don't know this, right? So when they build the, and, and they go out and they build these automated systems, right? Like the, the Weeblies and the, the, the Wix and stuff like that. And the systems have to be, they have, you have to, they're, they have to automate a bunch of stuff, right? So they have to use programmatic terms in order to build these things. And a lot of them, they were built a long time ago before people even paid any attention to like what exactly the H1 standard was and how search engines were going to use it. So now you've got these code bases that are humongous. There's thousands of lines of code in them. And we're trying to figure out how to how to search and optimize this stuff. How do we how do we replace all these random divs that all of these developers have created over the years? Well, we can't replace all of their divs, so we'll just let them do that. So people will have to go update their plugins. And now, right, like you have to go update your plugin. But what if the developer doesn't understand SEO? What if they what if they decided that it wasn't important enough to rewrite this template in order to put the H1 where it's supposed to be and to say this is the H1 and make sure the H1 is not the title of the page but what the page is actually about so it ranks higher in Google. If they don't understand that, then it doesn't happen. And if you don't understand it, then it doesn't happen. And if it doesn't happen, then nobody ever finds your web page because it, they never get, it never gets shown to anyone in search. And then the only way for people to find you is to go out on social media and talk to friends and family and pass out business cards and go from door to door and cold call people and email people. You got to do all this other stuff. And you still have to do that stuff anyway, but it becomes easier if your web page is optimized. Now, if you know how to build one, you can build two. And if you can build two, you can build four. And if you can, and if you do this over and over again, you can build hundreds of web pages. But we don't. Like, why don't I have hundreds of web pages right now? Because I got caught up in the hype of what learning to code was. And... I would come on YouTube and I'd be like, dude, I want to learn the code so I can build this thing. I want to learn the code so I can build my own apps. I want to learn the code so I can do this, that, and third, right? So I got to learn, all right, so I got to learn full stack development, man. I got to learn iOS development. So I go get a course on that. And I'm like, okay, all right, right? I got iOS development, right? Uh, and I still don't know what to build. Like, what did I what, what did I learn this for? Like, what am I going to build? I set out to learn iOS development and I didn't have an app in mind, but now I know Swift. Well, that's cool. All right. So I go out and I learn another thing and I got nothing to build. I go out and learn another thing. I got nothing to build. And then when I finally do get something to build, I realize that the code doesn't matter. The layout doesn't matter. Nothing matters because you have to have text on the site. You have to tell people who you are, what you're selling and how they can buy it. And then you have to tell it to them in enough words to where they understand the value of your product. And you have to tell it to them in such a way that a search engine can understand that your what what it is your whole web page and business is about. And then you and and so there's all this other stuff you have to do that you don't learn until you start trying to do it. And when a business hires you, they're hiring you to do that kind of stuff. But very few people know about that stuff because they've been out learning some React or some Angular or some whatever, or they just been learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But they haven't tried to build anything and they haven't they haven't built the page and asked themselves, why does nobody find this thing on the Internet? And what's even more crazy is once you even figure out that, yo, nobody is finding this thing on the Internet, you have to have the discipline to go fix the problem, like to figure out what exactly is causing people not to find you and then going out and looking for the answers. But that's it, team. That's that's front end and back end in a nutshell. That's all that's all web development, all software development, all everything. It's just like the rest of the world, team. And if you want to go out and you want to get a job, all you got to do is learn the core stuff and then think about how to build something or, or at the very least, think about how does something out there already work and how you would recreate it and then just try to recreate some simple version of that. So if we look at Instagram, Instagram is this crazy app. If we go over here and we just look at Instagram, we can ask ourselves, like, what does Instagram do? How does Instagram work? So let's go, like, if we go to Instagram.com forward slash the real Casadero. So when we go and look at this, 
here on the internet is just the web page there's a heading up here and then you've got like these images that display when you scroll over the images they show you these things but there's a database somewhere so when we loaded this page a database said hey like here's the images for the real Casadero and we're gonna show right out these are all my posts this is all I have so can we can we recreate this of course why not right team all we need is a database that'll hold the information for a owner of an account so that's what so that's where we'd start we'd start with an account page but let's like let's pare this down so like it's not fancy we don't need photo filters or nothing we just need a way for people to post photos that's it all you can do is post a photo and other people can come and look at it there's no way for them to like a photo or anything like that at all just yet so you just think about how would i do this I would I would first first somebody would have to be able to sign up right so on the page I would have a navigation bar and they would sign up and what would that sign up form do it would take them to another page they had a form they would fill in the information and when they click the sign up button this form would be checked to make sure this information was valid and if it was valid then it would be sent off to the server but if it's not valid like if we click sign up and there and there the information is invalid we're gonna show an X next to where the information is not valid and now you're thinking through these steps, right? How do I do that? How do I look at all this stuff and then put an X just by the stuff that's not valid, right? And now you gotta think through that and you come up with some sort of algorithm, you search the internet, you do whatever it is you gotta do, you figure it out. And then now it's like, okay, I got this form, how do I send this form to a web server? Like what? Like exactly what's gonna go down from this point on, right? Do I want the web server to make a web page and send it back? Or do I want the web server to just send back some data and then I will use I will use the document object model to update the page. So if we go back here, like, am I going to use, right? Am I, am I going to use some sort of web form to go get some other information or, or, or it bring back a whole nother page or I'm just going to update the data for that particular page, right? For that particular item or that particular object. So imagine if like you're loading this page and every time you have like a new like or something like if somebody came and liked the page right now, like the whole page would reload, right? That's not what it does. Like the like button would just go to four or something like that. Or maybe it wouldn't do anything. Maybe we wouldn't see that somebody else liked it until we hit refresh. And then we went back and we saw that somebody else could like an image. But you could recreate this like super simple. Like you, it doesn't have to be styled like really nice. I mean, but this would be a simple page to create. And then you would think about how would I populate this page with data? Like where would I get the data from and how would I lay the data out? That's full stack development right there, team. That is that is it. That's that's all, right? And 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 all of that. You didn't even think about the language. And now when you get to that point when it's like, okay, this is what I want to build. I want to build something that people they can go on the internet, they can open a web browser, they can type in an address, they can see a profile with a bunch of pictures on it, and then they can click a profile and they can say I they can leave a comment and they can say I like it. And then when they when they leave the comment and they click OK. The comment shows up in the comment section underneath the photo, right? And so this is, so all this stuff over here is being read from a database too. The image is coming from a database. The comments are coming from a data, database. When we click this button, instead of the whole page reloading and us getting a page back that has this box in it, we just get this box because the data is somewhere else. Or maybe, maybe when the page loaded, the data is downloaded and it's just sitting in memory right now waiting for us to click the box. And if we click the box, then it shows us the image and it shows us the, the comments that are associated with that. But that's all things that we would think through when we're building the application or how to build the application. And if we go through and we create a basic one of these, when we, when we do our resume and we go to send it out to somebody, we could say, hey, right, created website just like Instagram. And then people like, just like Instagram, what is this, right? And then they go to the web page and they see, oh, right, like it looks like Instagram. I can like this image. Oh, when I click, when I click that I want to like, it asks me to sign up. Oh, okay, all right, I'm gonna sign up, right? And then they try to, and then, and then they sign up and they're like, oh shit, like I can go in here and make an account. Okay, right? And then, right, maybe you got a button that's like, here, check us out on GitHub or something like that. And so if we go, like they don't have, they don't have one down here. But they do have an API, so we could go read about the API. So you could you could build an API for you. I mean, dude, the the sky's the limit. You could do all kinds of stuff. You could do all kinds of stuff. You could set up you could set up websites that generate different that generate different. You could set up a portfolio page 
that generates a different resume from one database based on what someone puts in the address bar. So like say for instance, you could have somebody, you could have, you know, I could have the real Casadero.com forward slash DevOps. And then that would show them like a DevOps resume. And then if they do the real Casadero.com forward slash uh software engineer it would be a whole different resume you could show them something completely different like you could build an application like that like you could build all kinds of stuff team and 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 if you build it out right then people got something to look at like if you were to build something like from the ground up similar to an instagram it doesn't have to be exactly like it but if it was laid out similar to this like if you made this like an end project like and it could be something crazy simple crazy simple but if it was a whole complete project and you, you could go out and you could say, hey, I built this thing. And, like, that's one thing that could go on your resume. And, it, and it's just sitting on the Internet just waiting to either make you a job or get you a customer. And you could have ads on it. You could charge people to sign up for it or whatever. It's just sitting there waiting for somebody to look at it and go, oh, this is impressive. I want this person to work for me and build something like this or maintain something like this or help me build something like this. Or... Somebody comes in like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to click this button. And, and then they click it and they're like, oh, I want to buy this thing. And they buy it and you get some sort of affiliate commission. That's where you start, team. You apply for the jobs. And then you learn this stuff as you go as you go along. And once you cross from CSS to JavaScript, now you're in full stack realm. Like that's that's the world going forward. And eventually you won't even have to touch a server. Everything you you you'll touch a server in the sense that everything you do will be controlled by some sort of API. You won't have to go in and set up machines or know any kind of back end programming language or nothing like that. Like you'll have one service for your database, you'll have another one for your images, you'll have another one for something else. And whenever somebody makes a request, all of that stuff will just be pulled in from all these APIs. And there's tons of applications out there doing this right now. All of the ad networks operate the same way. Everywhere you go and you see an ad, right? The ad, I mean, it's it's all the same stuff, team. Like, I can't say it enough. It's, it's when you wrap your head around that, everything else becomes infinitely easier. Because now you just need to know the language. If I want to build a web application, how do I do it? HTML to lay out the page, right? You just need some sort of structure. The browser is what's going to show people the page. How does the browser show people user interfaces? It shows people user interfaces by the programmer laying out the page using HTML and using CSS to structure it, to put borders and fonts and colors and all and buttons and images and all this other stuff. And so now it's like if I want to build something that's going to work on the Internet, I have to use HTML at some point. I have to. Like, that's it. Right. So either I can learn HTML or I can hire somebody who knows HTML. And then before I ever write the HTML, how, I got to know how I want this thing to look. How is it going to look? I can hire somebody to make a mock up or I can build a mock up myself. Once you have the mock up, it's like, OK, I got to code out the user interface. So it looks like this mock up. I can use an application. I could type it by hand. I could hire somebody to do it. I could steal it from somebody I'm like whatever. Right. Whatever. Like you just got to get this mock up. And then after that, it's like, OK, how do people log in? How do people make an account? And then you just go on to the next step. And while you're learning how to build it, every time you add a new feature, put it on your resume. Hey, right. Add it, you know, log in feature to application. And people are embarrassed to put this stuff because they think they're going to be judged. Ninety nine point nine nine percent of the people that you meet are going to forget who you are. They're not going to remember you. They won't care. Like you will have people who will see your name 15 times and they'll see it 16 times and won't know it's you, right? Like you could be one, one minute, one day they could hate you and then they forget your name. And then the next day they'll, they'll love you because they can't, re they can't remember that you're the same person from, from that, that they hated a little while ago because they don't, most people just don't care. They, they don't care. So, we, we put yourself out there, right? There's going to be some haters. There's going to be some people like, oh, right, this guy, he's just terrible. He's not. There's people who, who are going to watch this video like, this dude doesn't know what he's talking about. And that's cool, right? That, that's the way it goes, man. That's why we have Republicans and Democrats. That's why we have religions. Everybody's always arguing with somebody else. What matters is what's good for you. That's the only question you have to ask. What is in this for me? What's, what's good for me? And what do I need to do to make this good for me? If I want to make a million dollars, I could help one person 
and they pay me a million dollars or I can help a million people and they each pay me a dollar. But either way, what's in it for me? Either way, you got to help somebody, right? That's that's number one. Or you can just steal it. Like, you go take it. But that's what you got to think about, team, is like getting outside of the box. It's not about front end, back end, whatever, blah, 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 blah. All programs are the same. User interface, logic. Logic is a programming language. It could be any programming language. Now, if, now if it's like, hey, I need to crunch numbers, like, like large amounts of numbers, or I need to pull in a bunch of data from somewhere, or I need to do like this complex thing, then you can't store it all in the browser. You can't send, like Google has to put search results in a server because the bot, the, the Google bots are, are just looking at websites all day, every day, and they're sucking in information and they have to store it and they have to sort it. And then when we do a search, they have to grab this information from the database and they have to return it to us. And the only reason they have to do this is to stay in business. If they start giving people search results that don't make any sense, nobody's going to use Google. No advertisers are going to use Google. And then Google's going to go out of business. So they have to give us the best results possible. And that's and they're they're hiring people to generate those results. And we are and we 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 expect those results. But at the end of the day, is it's just another application. When we type something into the search engine, the, the 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 browser sends it back to a server somewhere and the server says hey we're looking for this string of text what do we have that even remotely matches this and it does it like that as fast as possible in a blink of an eye it returns the results we're looking for and it gives us a page and that's an application that's how all applications work and once you understand that that's it every single application does the exact same thing and where it gets really complicated is when you get into the logic of looping over data how do i get how do i use this information to get the result that i'm looking for to get the answer that i'm looking for to get the estimation that i'm looking for that's where it gets super difficult and from there you can choose what language you need to solve that problem so if you're building if you're building a system for search then you may use a completely different language than what you would use as a as a system to just serve up charts and graphs or or tabular data or like numbers or names or addresses or whatever you may use a completely different back end you may use a completely different programming language you might use python for one and you might use c sharp for other for the other or maybe your product has two of these features and one was written in c sharp and one was written in python like by somebody else a long time ago and now they need to interact with each other and so now you have to decide like is there a way i can get c sharp to talk to python do i have to rewrite all of this c sharp code do i have to rewrite all of this and businesses struggle with these things and that's why they hire people and that's why they say i need a full stack developer or a database guy or this or that or this or that or whatever right if you got a project well, you say, hey, right, I built one thing in C-sharp, and I built this other thing and this other thing, and then I had to make them talk to each other. Even if it's not the same language, if you're the only person that shows up and it's like I took two different programming languages, I made them do this thing, right? After somebody has looked at 100 resumes, and they have never seen an example of anything that anyone has ever built, and they see you, they're like, oh, well, at least we can teach this person. They have some sort of baseline understanding, and then you get the job, and now you're, you're on your way. But you won't get that job until you can prove that you can do that thing. And a boot camp isn't going to necessarily do that for you. What happens to a lot of people is they go through the boot camp and then they're like, yo, man, I've done this thing. I've, I've went through this boot camp, but they feel like they don't know how to build anything. And now they go off and try to learn the next thing. And they keep working the job that they have, you know, asking to do more and more. But the company didn't hire them to do that. So the company's not asking them to do more. Some people get lucky and the company's like, oh, yeah, you can do this. But a lot of people, they don't, and they stay at this job, and all of the things that they learned in this boot camp slowly fade away, and at the same time, they never build any web pages, like me. Like, I worked at this fantastic job for two, for two years, and I didn't build any web pages. Like, I'm, I'm in front of a computer all day. I know code. I know how to build this stuff, but I never thought about, like, what to build. I saw the websites. I saw the blogs, I saw the videos about building niche sites and all this stuff, but I was making enough money. I never thought about it. I was like, hey, man, I'm cool, right? I'm just going to keep learning Angular and Vue and all this other stuff, 
and you know I'll just upgrade to another job when that comes along and I, I never did right and, and if I'd have had it just been building the sites and recording the videos and making the tutorials and really learning and mastering the fundamentals like I'm doing now like I've been doing for the last year or so it'd be a completely different story like I would have 50 to 100 websites out there just generating money and now I'm in the process of building those sites but I did I I I, I would have not only would I have learned everything that I know now about full stack software engineering and I mean it's it's not like I'm not going to be going out and writing any like award winning code that IBM is going to come suck up and incorporate into their corporate machine but I can definitely write enough code to build you know a few dozen websites that generate you know 100 bucks a month and call it good you know what I'm saying like like what what would that do like that would be awesome right and that's the whole that's the whole point and so if you want to learn full stack development right just start like what can I build right now that I can use to help me get a job and it can't be like some it can't be some, and this is where a lot of people mess up right and even still right it can't be something that people have either they have to be able to see your code and see how the code works or they have to see the product and like anybody looking at code is bored but if you can show them a product that resembles what it is they got going on then they're kind of cool with that so like maybe if you want to build games and you want to work at a game company you'd write a game but then that game would have to be like kind of on par with like what every what that game company makes because then they're going to be looking at you like oh man you know whatever right like when it comes to like web apps you can look at a web app and you can recreate how something looks and it'll work and it'll look the same and it'll work the same but the code may be completely different you may have arrived at all the results that you got in a completely different way and it would be the same with a game but I'm just, I'm just saying like a game would be more complicated somebody would have to download it and install it and do all this stuff with a web app like you ain't got to do none of that stuff you could and so you could build a game inside of a web app I mean you could build a game using HTML5 canvas and JavaScript same fundamentals apply it's just the programming language is different you have an event loop you use the canvas to print all your stuff to the screen and that's how you build your game and I'm not a game expert like I don't know how to build games man but if I had to I could go out to the internet and figure it out like it's like okay how do I build an HTML5 game and then you go find like some basic game and you look at the code and you're like okay all right and then you learn and then you start to learn different stuff because you're out reading the documentation you're like okay this is an event loop what does the event loop do oh okay all right so whenever i need to do something i just i just attach it to this loop that's running on this timer and it does things like move my thing across the screen in this direction that i said and do all this other and so like you learn to build that stuff and then you learn frameworks as you go so as you're trying to figure out stuff you come across something and somebody's like hey like you can use this frame work to animate your character and make him jump up and down or use this physics engine but the only way you can understand what they're talking about is if you understand the core if you understand javascript then it's like oh right you can import this javascript library and it has to be a javascript library because the program is going to run inside of the browser so you can incorporate this javascript library and now all you're going to be doing when you incorporate the library is you're going to be calling functions that you give some sort of data to and that function returns back that data and you do something with that data or that function does something with that data for you and so you may say hey right like here's the size of my screen this is where I want this item to appear boom you give it to the function and then the function says hey here's and it, and it calls another function that says hey put this item here and every time the 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 clock ticks another value changes and it puts the item in a different place and that's that's how the program will work but the language doesn't matter until you get to like where the program is going to be what you need to use team so that's full stack that is that is the down and dirty nitty-gritty everything you need to know about full stack development if that made sense to you team subscribe to the channel and if you want to support the channel check out code 365 startuplab.com i'm going to hit 
the Windows key and I'm gonna type in term and null and we're gonna go to sites that's I T E S we're gonna hit enter this is gonna open up some websites we'll go to the full screen team and if you want to support the channel you can check out the code 365 startup lab where I'm building a complete HTML course from the ground up this is gonna teach you the fundamentals everything you need to know to build semantically correct search engine optimized websites now I can't give you all of the information because I don't have it all in my head and it would take me forever to go out and research and compile all the internet into one place but what I want to do here is to give you all of the baseline knowledge that you need in order to build the things you want to build and as you learn more you can go and build on top of this knowledge team as you learn different tips and tricks you can come and you can apply those tips and tricks to the things that you learned here so right now we're on HTML I'm uploading these as fast as I can they're very detailed videos and when I finish HTML I'm gonna go into CSS and then I'm gonna go into JavaScript and then we're, I'm going to have a bunch of examples team and the goal is to get everything that anyone needs to go from not knowing anything about computers or programming or web development or anything and being able to go in here and decide what they want to do. Do I want to build 50 websites that make some money online and grow them to where I can retire or do I want to go out and get a job or do I just want to do this in my spare time or what like you? can pick your own adventure that's the goal if you want to get a job resume templates and all that stuff it's not here yet but it's coming team that's why I priced the code 365 startup lab at 99 bucks 99 bucks lifetime access and and I'm gonna be uploading more stuff so as that content comes in you're gonna have access to it gonna have the ability to use it but what's most important what's most important team is as the community grows and I build up the slack channel and I put together the form and I build up the mailing list and we move towards the ultimate goal of everybody in the community being able to communicate with one another and pass around ideas and 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 help people work on their projects that's that's the goal is to build it to something like that so you can have a place where you can go and you can say hey like I got this idea is there a graphic designer that can help me if somebody goes yeah like I understand graphic design I'll build that and like you can build this own team of people team so that's one way you can support the channel another way you can support the channel is to check out writecodedrinkcoffee.com where you can pick up some hats some shirts some mugs and some stickers team and you just click on one of these and pick the one you want you can grab the hat that I'm wearing actually not on the site so just check back periodically you can get that hat but I do have the Visual Studio Code hat so you can grab that one right there the other hats are coming back the hats like this and then I think there's one more design the actual C prompt hat that I wear with the green C prompt that's going to be coming back to you but if you want to support the channel just check out the code 365 startup lab and write code drinkcoffee.com thanks for hanging out with me here team i look forward to seeing you in the next session